today we'll discuss traffic engineering topic will be covered today is uh, what is traffic engineering then uh, traffic intensity some of us uh, some useful parameters also same uh, whatever be the, the total number of subscriber existing subscriber in a particular time uh, on a particular exchange is uh, basically traffic intensity now uh, all the traffic exchange all the telephone exchanges is designed based on some uh, parameters what are, what are the parameters we'll discuss that today then uh, grid of service uh, basically what kind of service uh, quality of service um, on subscriber uh, used to get from uh, exchange is the grid of service uh, of that uh, subscriber basically this is a subscriber parameter then blocking network uh, what is blocking network? Suppose let's consider in an area we have a thousand number of subscriber there, uh, but my exchange is having capability to handle uh, 500 number of calls simultaneously. That means 500 number of subscribe um, server available there. So um, thing is, uh, if demand raised at some time is 550, then 50 number of subscriber have to be blocked. So this type of network is called blocking network and any network in the in this time is basically blocking by nature uh, then blocking probabilities uh, blocking probabilities is basically the um, uh, property of any exchanges uh, then uh, we will discuss about losses system then date of death and birth process so birth process is basically in uh, this aspect of our telecommunication uh, birth means um, some introduction of some new calls and death means uh, termination of some calls. Uh, okay, then uh, steady state conditions uh, means some call is coming, some is also um, terminating. So that means some steady state con condition is always there. We'll establish that um, steady state condition. Then we'll derive uh, Erlang's B formula and Erlang's C formula. Uh, that's all for today's class. So what is traffic engineering? Traffic, uh, before that, uh, let me know what is traffic. Okay, traffic is basically occupancy of the server. Uh, we are the subscriber, tele, uh, cell phone user, we are the subscriber. Now telephone exchange is having some servers. So um, uh, number of uh, server available, the number of server occupied is basically uh, uh, called the traffic uh, traffic is usually uh, traffic is usually expressed basic uh, purpose of the um, uh, traffic engineering is to provide adequate service with economical use of resources so you have a um, thousand number of subscriber and as i said in my example we have a uh, uh, 500 number of servers okay so uh, I have to have some idea that uh, what should be my peak traffic load, uh, what should be the traffic load in my peak hour. So based on that number of server have to be designed. So all these aspects comes under traffic engineering. So what should be the quality of service, what should be the number of subscriber, what should be the peak hour loads, all these aspects should be monitored in traffic engineering. It provides the basis of analysis and design of telecommunication network model um, to provide best accessibility and greater utilization of lines and trunks. So um, subscriber line interfaces and trunk lines should be utilized uh, mostly uh, as much as possible. That means um, optimization of utilization of trunk line interfaces and, and subscriber line interfaces should be done. Um, then determines the ability of telecom network to carry a given traffic at a particular loss probability. So um, loss probability should be designed. That means um, a pro um, blocking probability. We'll, dis uh, we'll discuss that issue today. Uh, then I will take the help of traffic theory and queuing theory from computer science here uh, to calculate the blo blocking probability, basically, which is um, Arlang's B formula. We'll discuss that today. 
So, as it uh, shown here, it is traffic in Erlang. Basically, it is normalized traffic. Uh, a, there should be value of one. It is one. It is zero point eight like that. Uh, I've written percentage. Okay. Then this is a um, time of day in hour. So as you can see, when uh, this is one hour, one hour means uh, one a.m. night. Uh, one a.m. at night. So one a.m. two a.m. There the traffic intensity should be quite low, and uh, because um, few people used to call at that time. Uh, okay. Now. When this is a, you can see here, it is around 7 a.m. Uh, people wake up uh, suddenly, then uh, they started calling, uh, necessary calling at around 10 to 11 a.m. And some um, they are they are having a peak because you know office people uh, used to call at that time. Then uh, everything day by day work starts. Then we have uh, this is you no know, this is five to six uh, p.m. Um, all the office hour ends and then there will be another peak like that. Okay, this is the accumulated car for domestic and official peoples. Uh, this is basically traffic intensity. That means numbers of subscriber calling together. So basically, this is the uh, numbers of active subscriber on a particular time. In a particular time. So basically, this traffic intensity depends on several aspects as well. This is only variation with the time of day, but it uh, can vary with respect to season, uh, then business hours, then weekend, festivals, location of exchanges, uh, tourism area, etc., etc. So and this uh, traffic is basically unpredictable uh, and random in nature and traffic pattern of an exchange should be analyzed for the system design. So if we want to design any exchange, we have to take care about the area, uh, locations, uh, timing, etc., etc. What should be the traffic pattern that depends on that. Then grade of service and blocking probability, it is also important parameter to consider about. Because your quality of subscriber um, is uh, uh, defining your uh, type of service you want to provide. So suppose you are um, going to design an exchange uh, for any um, important area and you are uh, keeping uh, blocking probability high, so this is not going to be work. So useful parameter like uh, calling rate. So what is calling rate? average number of requests for connection uh, that are met per unit time. That means average number of uh, incoming call per unit time. So if you have a, a T time interval and within this T time interval, uh, N number of incoming call is coming, then uh, calling rate that is basically called birth rate lambda is N upon T. Then holding time, holding time is the duration of call occupancy. Uh, of a traffic path by a call. So you have initiated some call. So that uh, within that duration of call, you are occupying the um, path. Uh, so this is going to be your uh, holding time. Sorry, call, uh, yes, holding time. Okay. Uh, then recipro reciprocal of the holding time is called service rate mu. So mu is basically called death rate as well. So uh, uh, mu is the uh, average holding time h and on upon h is called mu. Probability of a call uh, lasting at least t second is given by exponential t upon h. h is the holding time exponential minus t upon h. h is the holding time. Then average occupancy. Suppose you have a um, in number of call in t time interval, then h is the average holding time of each call, then nh upon t is going to be the average occupancy. This is uh, nothing but traffic in our lengths. So it is nothing but um, nh upon t is basically, uh, uh, you know, n upon t is basically lambda. So h into lambda, lambda is the birth rate. Now, this is, uh, uh, h is equal to 1 upon mu, 
so it is going to be mu uh, sorry lambda upon mu so lambda upon mu is going to be the value of a a is basically called traffic intensity as well so traffic intensity is lambda upon mu so lambda is the birth rate mu is the death rate this is very important relationship so we'll use that thing later on what is the uh, bg hour bg hour is the 60 minute time interval that means one hour where traffic intensity is maximum called bg hour and uh, from this graph we have seen that um, near about um, 9 to 10 or 10 to 11 we are having some bg hours and 5 to 6 pm we are having another bg hour as well uh, this is usual for uh, um, any exchange for variation with the um, time of uh, day call completion rate what is call completion rate it is a ratio a ratio is the number of successful call to the number of total call attempts so let's consider uh, we for some particular time we have um, uh, for some particular time t we are having a hundred number of uh, call get initiated to that exchange but out of this 100, uh, 75 number of call get successfully executed. Okay, so um, 0 0.75, that means 75 upon 100 is going to be the CCR of that exchange. So usually this 0 0.75 CCR um, is considered a very excellent value. Average, at an average it is um, uh, 0.7. CCR value is good enough for any exchange. Uh, we are... Um, Probably we are talking about any exchange of R1 area. Fine. Then uh, traffic intensity. Traffic intensity is the top, total uh, volume of traffic in a particular time um, interval, basically. So traffic intensity can be expressed, as I said, traffic intensity A. We quantify that A is basically lambda upon mu. So traffic intensity can be expressed by A2 units on is uh, Erlang. Erlang means traffic value volume per hour or 3600 second and uh, another one is called CCS send call second this send means 100 eh? so 100 uh, in 100 second number of call initiation is basically send call second so um, uh, one Erlang is basically 3600 uh, basically it's 3600 call second means uh, one call sorry uh, 100 call, sec call second is basically on send call second. So it is 36 CCS. Means uh, if you divide this thing by further 60, you will have a 60 call minute. So this is the relation on uh, our length is basically 36 CCS. Grade of service is basically, as I said, it is a property of subscriber on some subscriber is having services so it is the basic thing to consider by subscriber this is not uh, the property of exchange end so grid of service is basically a uh, number of uh, lost call that means number of call which get blocked or unsuccessful call divided by total initiation of calls this, uh, this ratio is basically called grid of service so this is lost traffic divided by offered traffic. Let's consider in some area we have a thousand number of uh, subscriber. Uh, we have designed some exchange in this area having a capability to handle 500 numbers of calls simultaneously at a time. So uh, let's consider in that area at some particular time we are having 550 number of um, call initiation. So what happens? We have to um, block 50 number of calls. So this 50 upon the total initiation of call 500 is going to be your grid of, ser um, grid of service. Okay. So this is nothing but uh, if A is your uh, um, offer traffic, A naught is carry traffic. That means um, call that successfully get executed. Uh, so A minus A0 divided by A is going to be, so what is A minus A0 is lost traffic. That means 
uh, number of unsuccessful call divided by offer traffic that is um, total call initiation is going to be the grade of service okay smaller the value of grade of service better the service naturally because you know uh, a minus a0 by a so a minus a0 is the lost traffic number of unsuccessful call so exchange will be good if number of unsuccessful unsuccessful call is less so uh, number of unsuccessful call by total call is grade of service so to be exchange good enough uh, your um, grade of service should be low fine so recommended grade of service is basically 0.002 that means to call uh, per 1000 call fine so uh, recommended value of grade of service is uh, it should block two number of calls per 1000 calls okay uh, with equal number of subscriber and server grade of service is zero so this is basically um, some impractical exchange that means that you have 1000 number of sub subscriber you are designing 1000 number of sub server for them so no intelligence exists there in that case you know there will be no lost calls so practically uh, uh, nowadays number of subscriber is increasing exponentially um, so it is it is not possible to design this type of exchange but um, for um, uh, your convenience if grade of service that means if number of server is equal to number of subscriber so grade of service is equal to 0 naturally a is equal to a0 in that case okay so grade of service is applied to a terminal to terminal connections uh, that means from uh, source to destination connections uh, we have segment of um, connections that means uh can be exchanged to subscriber that is subscriber line interfaces then uh, exchange to exchange that is trunk interfaces and uh, um then that exchange to the called subscriber so there may be several segments but it is it should be considered because for any successful call uh, source to destination uh, should be engaged so um, thing is it is the idea of end to end encryptions so it is terminal to terminal it is considered for terminal to terminal connections then uh, uh, we'll discuss about blocking network so uh, basically as i said uh, as many as number of subscriber you are having in your exchange uh, designing uh, that many number of server is basically a hypothetical idea nowadays because number of subscriber is huge so you have to have some optimization mechanism that means uh, you have to be careful enough to design your exchange how many number of server uh, you are designing there and it should be um, it should be and it's supposed to be less than number of subscriber available so each and every network is blocking in in nature because number of subscriber is more number of server is less so any unblock network unblocking network is basically impractical and uneconomical so all practical network are blocking in nature some calls have to be rejected anyhow and we tried when the server are available so there based on that there may be two types of um, two types of call blocking basically two categories of call blocking on is call blocking systems on is uh, lost is lost system that means call block due to no equipment is available at that instant of call request that means uh, no server available so that call will be lost so let consider consider that example again that 50 number of subscriber out of 550 is not having any server available so that 50 number of subscriber will get blocked now all the history of this 50 number of subscriber after blocking will get cleared uh, whenever they will retry they will retry then that call will be considered new initiation again as that will be considered as new call again so that is called lost system 
another one is called um, waiting system what is waiting system that uh, call which is uh, um, not capable to entertain at that time will uh, put into some queue some delayed mechanism okay it will get delayed after some time if server available it will get executed so it is waiting system so erlang's b formula is basically designed for lost is lost system or blocking system and erlang c formula is designed for this waiting system What is uh, blocking probability? As I said, grade of service is the property from subscriber n. So blocking probability is the property of exchange end. So blocking probability is defined uh, the probability of all the subs, all the server is busy. Uh, it is the telephone company's grade of service. It is a measure uh, of subscriber. I'm sorry. Uh, grid up service is the measure uh, from subscriber point of view, whereas blocking probability is the measure from network or switching point of view. So, number of call rejected is basically quantifies grid up service. That means grid up service is calculated based on uh, the number of unsuccessful calls, whereas uh, the blocking probability is basically the probability. Uh, uh, of switching system or server is busy, that probability quantifies or are used to calculate the blocking probabilities. So, uh, as we discussed earlier, we have uh, two basic uh, systems. Uh, one is uh, loss system, another is wedding system. Uh, basically, we have three types of loss systems. That means um, one. Uh, First one is lost call cleared. It is basically the blocking systems or lost system. These two, that means lost call return a lost call held is basically the wedding system. So what is lost call cleared? Lost call cleared means it's a blocking system. Suppose we, we are blocking, your exchange is blocking 50 number of calls. So this 50 number of calls uh, details of this of this uh, 50 numbers of calls will get cleared so whenever that uh, this call will return back again that means they will redial it will be considered as new initiation then what is lost call return lost call return is basically um, uh, a waiting system suppose um, all the exchange are busy uh, some call is get initiated then it will it will be delayed and uh, retried time to time and whenever server will be available uh, it will get executed after some retries then the lost call health system lca system is basically a waiting system suppose all the ser server are busy some call get initiated then it will it will be put inside some queue and it will be retried time to time okay after a sufficient delay after sufficient delay, it will retry. Okay, then uh, if server available, then it will get executed. Otherwise, it will be delayed again. And uh, if number of call uh, in wait in queue exceeds some certain limit, say if it is the M MMN system, then if uh, number of call in queue exceeds uh, uh, n, then it will all the call will automatically get blocked will get blocked fine what is death and birth process as i said death process as i said um, birth is or some uh, new call initiation death means uh, some uh, termination of some calls let uh, nt be the uh, random variable what is nt number of active subscriber at certain time t is empty so uh, let us um, try to um, consider this diagram again uh, this is uh, uh, basically state transition diagram or bath and death process uh, some chain diagram called markov chain here 
uh, try to understand two things. Suppose uh, this zero state means number of active subscriber is zero first. Secondly, probability of having this zero state is P of zero. State on means what? Number of active subscriber one and probability of having your system in this state is P of one. Similarly, state n means you are having n number of su active subscriber at that moment and probability of having your system in a state n is P of n. Fine. Here uh, lambda is the birth rate, mu is the death rate. So if you have uh, some death, some birth here, then it will uh, go to higher and higher stage. If it, you are having some death initiation, then it will go to lower states. So let's consider the conditions. P of k is the probability of k state, as I said earlier. P of k plus 1 is the probability of k plus 1 state. The probability of transition from k state to k plus 1 state in short duration del t is lambda into del t. Lambda is the birth rate into del t where, okay, uh, lambda is called the birth rate of um, the state k. Now, probability of transition from k state to k minus 1 state is basically uh, mu k into del t. So if you have a block system, then it is mu into del t. And if you have a wedding system, that means uh, for k state, k number of um, uh, new initiation can, uh, can, can be inside QE or any number of, um, any number of uh, new call can uh, generate. So it is basically that means any type, uh, any number of uh, call get inside, any number of low, uh, process can get inside QV. So for K state, it is K number of, so it is get multiplied by K. If your system is wedding system, otherwise it is simply mu into del T. Okay, mu is the death rate. Probability of no change of state in the time interval del T equal to, so no change of state, uh, uh, this is something written over here. I will explain that thing later on, okay because it, it depends, uh, it depends uh, on several aspects. So we let not consider this thing. Okay, probability of um, transition at uh, time del T uh, from K state to other than K plus one or K minus one is zero. That means simply, um, suppose you are in, you are in this uh, first state, then you can go first state to second state or first state to zero state, but uh, probability of transition from say first stage that is on state to third state is not possible. So it is zero. So only transition is step by step transition. There will uh, not be any jump of states. Probability of uh, this uh, state um, step jumping is zero. That means from n state it can go to n minus one state or n plus one state it can't go beyond that okay fine so let us uh, try to understand birth and death process again as i said um, earlier it is uh, lambda into del t or lamb or mu into del t uh, here for birth and death process let's try to understand this thing again so what is birth, what is birth process Birth process is basically new call arrival is called birth process. So what is the probability of that associated with this birth process? Basically, it depends on Poisson distribution. So according to Poisson distribution, so if uh, lambda into del T is the rate, then uh, you know lambda into del T upon n uh, probability is basically lambda into del t upon n into exponential la minus lambda del t divided by n factorial. So we have considered on new call generation. So it is 1 lambda into del t power 1 then exponential minus lambda into del t 
divided by one factorial so it is basically now we have considered this del t as infin infinitesimally small so exponential of minus lambda into del t is basically one for del t very small so from where we'll have uh, the probability of a state transition from n state to n plus one state is basically lambda into del t for death process if we apply uh, similar thing uh, similar logic here so probability of transition from n state to n minus on state that means if we consider death process so it will be uh, simply mu into del t if it is a blocking process and uh, mu k times of del t if it is a coding process now what is uh, state transition condition uh, steady state condition uh, let uh, have a quick picture here so we have so let consider we have some uh, state uh, we have some kth state here this is kth state so which on can comes to kth state suppose some process in uh, k plus on state and some death there on death there then it can comes to kth state Another one is suppose on process in K minus one state on birth there and then it can comes to K state and again third condition is suppose on uh, uh, process in uh, K state no birth or no death happening there so that process uh, remains in K state again. So these three conditions possible. So if we can uh, if we consider steady state condition in K state so we'll uh, at time uh, t so we'll consider these three conditions on um, first condition is system was in k minus one state uh, one new call arrives at del t time and system moves to k state naturally it is it was in k minus one state one generation is there that means on birth is there so it will move to it will move to k state so what is the probability of this probability of this is basically what was the probability it was t of k minus 1 when the process was in k state multiplied by transition probability and what do we know transition probability for birth process is lambda times of del t so p of k minus 1 into lambda del t is basically the probability of a process which was in k minus 1 state and having a new call arrival and moves to k state so probability of that is basically p of k minus on lambda del t second condition is let consider the system was in k plus on state and on call departure is there on death process is there then the system moves to k state so what is the probability of that probability of having k plus on state is p of k plus one that is going to be multiplied by k plus 1 into mu del t or simply mu uh, p of k plus 1 multiplied by mu into del t if it is a blocking state if it is a waiting state we will consider this k plus 1 again k plus 1 only um, for only for um, uh, waiting state waiting process for blocking process we will consider this k plus we will not consider this k plus 1 here now what is the third condition third condition is system was in k state no call departure no call arrival as well at del t time interval so system remains in k state what is the probability of that system oh, we are having a system in k state is p of k probability associated with that is p of k now one minus one minus this uh, and um, birth rate minus death rate is basically um, uh, we are considering this k here um, for general generalizing the situation so we'll consider this uh, as one uh, we will consider this k as one where we'll consider uh, blocking process so um, simply one minus death rate minus birth rate is basically probability of no change 
probability of no state being uh, no state transitions into probability of having any state in k state having any process in k state is p of k so p of k multiplied by 1 minus lambda del t uh, minus mu k del t is the probability of a process having in k state with no generations and no departure of calls so at a steady state so ultimately if we add all these three we will have the probability we will have the probability to have any state in kth state so it, it is nothing but a pk again so pk is basically um, sum of all these three probabilities so if we further simplify this it is um, uh, lambda plus mu k uh, into p of k is equal to basically lambda into p of k minus 1 plus k plus 1 into mu into p of k plus 1 this is let's consider this as equation number one okay uh, now i have given my handout there so this was equation number one now we let consider this is a blocking system again so for blocking system as i said for blocking system k is one blocking system means uh, for this markup chain uh, process that means only one state transition is possible either positive side or negative side so one call can arrive or on call can departure so one state transition possible at a time so for that thing k is equal to 1 so if we put k is equal to 1 we are having a lambda plus mu into p of 1 into is equal to uh, lambda p of 0 plus 2 into mu of mu into p of 2 so this is equation number 2 so let us consider at the system is in zero state again i have given this state transition diagram again here so from zero state it can't go to minus one state because minus one state mean doesn't mean anything because my, you can't have minus one subscriber active so minimum you have zero subscriber active um, so from zero state on directional transition possible so from uh, zero state if you have any process in zero state it can go to one state only or it can remains to its own state so what is the what is p of zero p of zero means probability of having any process in zero state is basically the probability of um, let's consider this first so let's consider you have some process in on state from there on death occur on death occur your process moves to zero state so it is p of one probability of having a pro having your system in on state is p of one multiplied by this uh, death rate into del t uh, so this plus no change probability is basically p of 0 minus of uh, p of 0 into 1 minus lambda into del t uh, that means lambda into del t is the bath probability so uh, 1 minus lambda into del t is the probability to remain the process in zero state so it is the transition probability uh, lambda into delta is the transition probability of zero to on state zero state to on state transition probability is lambda into delta so one minus lambda into delta is the no change probability that means any process in zero state it will remain in zero state there will be no transition its probability is uh, one minus lambda into delta if you multiply it by p of zero so this is the um, ultimate probability that any process which was earlier in p0 state earlier in zero state with p0 probability and having no change again and it is further remain in zero state after even after time del t and this is the transition probability from first state to zero state having on death so accumulatedly this is p of zero so if you further simplify this p of 0 is equal to p of 0 minus p0 into lambda del t plus p on into mu del t so from here you will have p on is basically lambda upon mu into p0 so from equation number two here if you uh, 
put that a value of p on so from equation number 2 this is the equation number 2 and uh, now uh, in that place of p on uh, if you put this value equation number 4 p on means lambda upon mu into p0 and if you simplify this you will have p2 is equal to 1 upon 2 factorial lambda upon mu whole square into p of 0 this is not p0 this is p of 0 so this is equation number 5 similarly if you write the equations for p of k it is 1 upon k factorial lambda upon mu power k into p of 0 so now you know the sum of all the probabilities is basically 1 so k is equal to 0 to infinity p of k is basically 1 so if you put the value of p of k this value of p of k in this equation so you will have uh, k is equal to 0 to infinity 1 upon k factorial into uh, lambda upon mu power k into p of 0 is basically 1 so from where you can have value of p of 0 it is basically 1 uh, upon 1 uh, upon this uh, all these values you will have this is equation number 6 now uh, p of n is basically uh, from uh, from this generic equation p of n is basically 1 upon n factorial into lambda upon mu power n into p of 0 so i am putting this value for p of p of n so 1 upon n factorial into lambda upon mu uh, power n into p0 sorry it is p of 0 so sorry excuse me sorry it is p of 0 so uh, from uh, here p of n uh, so i am further putting the value of p of 0 here so it is 1 upon n factorial lambda upon mu power n i am putting this p of value of p of 0 here uh, this is the value of p of 0 i am putting this value here so i'll have this p of n is basically 1 upon n factorial lambda upon mu power n divided by uh, k is equal to 0 to n 1 upon k factorial lambda upon mu power k now what is the total traffic uh, total traffic basically call arrival rate that means birth rate into time is the total traffic so um, t means 1 upon mu possibly we have derived earlier so lambda upon mu is basically uh, a is a total traffic intensity so uh, possibly we have seen that thing earlier so a is basically lambda upon mu so if you replace this value here so this p of n is basically the blocking probability so this blocking probability is 1 upon factorial n uh, power a power n divided by uh, k is equal to 0 to infinity 0 to n basically here 1 upon k factorial a power k so this is basically called erlang's b formula or this is basically the blocking probability of um, the exchange so this is called erlang's b formula now uh, now let consider uh, the waiting system again or um, delay system waiting on delay system so we have uh, um birth rate lambda here for all the cases we have birth rate lambda but thing is we have a, a number of um, as the we ha as we have a number of active subscriber increasing so number of uh, death can increase simultaneously because when we have a, uh, we have number of subscri active subscriber more so number of uh, death should be more that means number of um, uh, subscriber put inside qe should be more or supposed to be more fine for um, so for that from uh, first state to zero state uh, say death rate in you know, mu from uh, second to first it is 2 mu from for i minus 1 state it is i minus 1 mu for i state it is i mu for i plus 1 state it is i plus 1 mu for n state it is n mu but when it is exceeds n for n plus 1 state it is again n mu for n plus 2 state it is again n mu that means it is m mm n system means maximum number of maximum n number of subscriber uh, can put inside queue uh, 
after that if a number of active call is more than n and already and we are having already n number of um, subscriber inside queue then the rest of the call will get rejected fine so for this uh, when uh, this uh, active subscriber is less than n so lambda into p0 lambda is the birth rate so lambda into p0 is basically mu into p1 lambda into p1 is basically 2 mu into p2 uh, lambda into pi is basically i plus on mu p of i plus on similarly lambda into pn minus on is basically n mu p of n but when n but when this active subscriber exceeds n means lambda into pn is basically n mu p of n plus on lambda into p of n plus j is basically again n mu it is not n plus j plus one mu it is n mu p of n plus j plus on so if we um, simplify that thing further so p on if, uh, we can calculate p on from here it is nothing but lambda by mu into p0 p2 is uh, half lambda by mu into p on if we put the value of p on from here this value of p on so we'll have on upon 2 factorial lambda upon mu square uh, P, P of 0, this is P of 0. So, similarly, P of i is uh, basically 1 upon i factorial lambda upon mu power i into P of 0 when this i, um, i is less than n is basically less than equals to n. From That means i varies from 0 to n, then this is true. Otherwise, when i is more than n, then this thing is true. For this, this case, P of i is basically, you can calculate easily from here, uh, generic formula, uh, you can calculate from here, it is nothing but lambda upon mu power i divided by n factorial n power i minus n into P, zero, P of 0. Fine. So, what is uh, P of i? P of i is basically P0, basically lambda upon mu, basically mm, you know lambda upon mu means a so putting this value uh, p of i is basically p0 into a power i upon i factorial when uh, uh, i uh, varies from 0 to n otherwise when i is more than n then it is p0 into a to the power i divided by n factorial into n to the power i minus n now uh, it is the value of p of i now, if we um, use the generic formula of probability, that is uh, i is equal to 0 to infinity, p of i is equal to 1, sigma over, um, uh, if we have this enter summation, then we'll have uh, 1. So, putting this formula here, it is nothing but p of 0 for the first portion, it is p of 0, then e of i upon i factorial means 1 for 0 then a upon 1, then a square upon 2 factorial, likewise a to the power n upon n factorial, plus for this, when i is greater than n, then it is a power n by n factorial for this portion, and again, uh, rest of the thing is 1 plus a by n, then a square upon n square plus a q plus a q upon n q, likewise. This total sum is 1. Now, if we take PQ, uh, if you take P of 0 common, then we have sigma over a to the power i upon i factorial plus uh, this, uh, this, fact, this factor, a to the power n upon n factorial into sum of that. Sum of that is basically, this is infinite sum basically. Um, n can go to you know, infinity up to, uh, that means, uh, you know, when i is greater than n, means i is greater than n means i is n to infinity so what about this sum this is nothing but one upon one by um, one upon uh, one upon one minus a by n basically in this thing so if you have so this is this is infinite sum this is this means one upon uh, one minus a by n so you will have n by n minus a is equal this sum is equal to one so from where you will have p0 so this thing will go to denominator so this is one upon this thing fine so what is p of i is basically so let me rewrite this formula again in terms of this p0 p of 0 
so it is nothing but this factor um, and uh, if n is uh, if i is up to n then it is uh, multiplied by e i upon i factorial otherwise it is this much now what is the weighting probability weighting probability is basically uh, this um, this number this is basically number of um, subscriber which is uh, which is more than n it is m by mm n system so this is more than m so this is uh, this must supposed to be this must process supposed to be in weight state so what is weighting probability this factor multiplied by p0 is the weighting probability so it is a power n by n factorial into n by n minus a into p0 let's put the value of p0 here so this um, this factor multiplied by what is p0 p0 is this value so if you have uh, this p0 value here so ultimately this thing is the uh, um, weighting probability that means if you have an incoming process, the probability of put that process inside uh, uh, the waiting queue is this much. So this is basically called Erlang's C formula. So um, ultimately we have seen that Erlang's um, B formula is suitable for, uh, for uh, blocking process and Erlang's C formula is suitable and uh, that means applicable for any wording process fine uh, i think we should stop here today thank you